Hey guys, it's me, Little Mimi too, and today I'm starting off my new story time series. Um, I let you guys choose which stories you want to hear the most um, out of the series of books that I chose from the library. Um, and if you already saw by this title, we are going to be reading Thumbelina and also Coco Chanel. Um, these ones were the most um, requested out of all of them, these two together. Um, a lot of people were confused on how to request them, so those ones really didn't go into the pairing. So, um, maybe next time, <laughs> um, I'll explain it better, but, um, like, these two were the, um, a nonfiction and the fiction book, and, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy, and the first one that we're going to be reading, though, is Thumbelina. So before I begin, I want to say that I am not the best reader, um, but I do enjoy making these videos for you guys because you guys like them. Um, I believe I don't have dyslexia, but I have, uh, I haven't been tested, but I do sometimes say words incorrectly, um, or I'll see a word and as I'm reading, um, I'll like say a word that it looks like, but it's not. So, um, I'm not doing it on purpose. It's really frustrating for me. Um, but hopefully you guys won't judge me too hardly. Um, I am reading these books for you guys. Um, I like reading these books. That's the reason why I make these videos, but also I want to share them with you guys. Um, if, um, cause a lot of littles like to hear bedtime stories. So hopefully you guys enjoy these, um, stories times still. And, um, yeah, let's get on to reading the books. So if you're not watching this at nighttime or before a nap or something, I do suggest that you come back to this video. Um, the Melina is a very long book. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Long ago in a magical land, there lived a lonely woman who more than anything in the world wanted to have a child. She had been wishing for a very long time when her hope began to fade. She went to ask a fairy for advice. Please, good fairy, the woman said. I should so very much like to have a child. Can you help me? Of course, replied the fairy. You are the kindest of women. This barley, this barley seed holds the promise of your heart's desire. Plant it and care for it, it as it's tenderly as you would your own child, and your wish will come true. The woman hurried home and planted the seed in the flower pot. She watered it daily, anxiously watching to see what would grow. Soon a sprout appeared and grew into a blossom. Such a beautiful flower, the woman marveled. She bent down to kiss the blossom. As she did, the flower suddenly opened. The woman was amazed to see that in its very center sat a lovely little girl, scarcely as long as the woman's thumb. Delighted, the woman named the girl Thumbelina. The woman did everything she could to make Thumbelina feel at home. She set out a lovely bowl of water filled with flowers. To Thumbelina, it was as big as a lake, and she made herself a flower petal boat, which she rode about with horsehair oars. At night, Thumbelina slept in an elegantly polished and walnut lined with blue violets. A soft rose petal kept her warm, and as Thumbelina lived quietly, happily, quite happily until one warm night a large wet toad hopped through an open window and leapt upon the table where Thumbelina lay sleeping what a pretty little wife she would make for my son thought the toad she grabbed the walnut shell with Thumbelina in it and she jumped back out for the window into the garden the old toad carried Thumbelina to the swampy bank of the stream that flowed along the edge of the garden where she lived with her son. He was even uglier than his mother and could only cry. Croak, 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 when he saw Thumbelina in her elegant bed. Hush, or you'll wake her, whispered his mother. She might run away. We will place her on a lily pad out in the stream where she cannot escape. When Thumbelina woke in the morning, she found she was stranded on a lily pad with water on every side as far as she could see. She could not imagine how she had come to this strange place away from the comfort and love of her home. 
Thumbelina was frightened and wept miserably. Meanwhile, the old toad and her son were busy under the marsh, decorating a dark, muddy room for Thumbelina to live in. When the room was finished, they swam together out to the lily pad. The old toad bowed low and said to Thumbelina, This is my son, who will be your husband. You live together happily in the nearby marsh. Her son could only say, Croak, croak, croak. Then the toad swam away again. The little fish that darted beneath the lily pad had heard what the old toad said and lifted their heads out of the water to see the little maiden. It made them sad to see how unhappy she was. They felt sorry to think she must go to live with the, with the unpleasant old toad and her ugly son. We must save her, they decided, and so the fish began to gnaw the underwater stalk attached to the lily pad that held Thumbelita captive. Free from its root, the lily pad drifted quickly down the stream. Birds who watched from the trees that grew along the banks were charmed and sang to Thumbelina as she passed by. A graceful butterfly wanting to help Thumbelina lifted the lily pad's long stem from the water and pulled the little craft from far from the toad. But it wasn't just the birds and the butterfly who saw and admired Thumbelina. A large beetle flying overhead also spied Thumbelina. The moment she, he saw her, he swooped down and seized her. Thumbelina trembled with fear. What was going to happen to her now? Holding Thumbelina tightly, the beetle flew with her to a patch of broad leaves near the edge of the stream. He told her she was very pretty, although not in the least like a beetle. After a while, some other beetles joined them, but they turned up their antenna dis disagreeably. She has only two legs, said one. How repulsive. She has no antenna at all, said another, and her waist is so slender. Poo. Oh, she's very ugly, they all agreed. Hearing this, the beetle who grabbed Thumbelina from the lily pad would have nothing more to do with her and told her she could go where she liked. Thumbelina was happy to be free of the beetle, but wept at the thought that she was ugly, that even the beetles didn't want her company. She had no way of knowing how lovely she was. Thumbelina wandered for days before finding her way to a wild forest. She rolled herself a bed out of blands of grass and hung it under clover leaves for protection from the rain. She sucked nectar from the flowers for food and drank dew from the leaves every morning. So passed the summer and the autumn, but then came the cold, harsh winter. The birds who had sung to her sweetly flew away. The flowers wilted and the large leaves that had sheltered her for many months shriveled into nothing. Nothing remained but withered yellow stalks. When the snow began to fall, Thumbelina wrapped herself in a dry leaf but it cracked and could not keep her warm, so she set out to find shelter from the cold. She soon came to a cornfield that had been harvested. Nothing remained but the dry stubble poking out from the frozen ground. To Thumbelina, it was like making her way through the vast wilderness, and she quickly became lost. At last, Thumbelina came upon the den of a field mouse who lived under the cornfield. You poor little creature, the field mouse exclaimed when she saw Thumbelina. Come in out of the cold and dine with me. The mouse had sung kitchen, had a snug <laughs> The mouse had a snug kitchen and a whole room full of corn stored away from the winter. She was happy for the company, so she invited Thumbelina to stay with her until spring. You must keep my rooms clean and neat and tell me stories. I love to hear stories. Thumbelina did all that the field mouse asked of her and passed the rest of the winter very comfortably. One day the field mouse said, we shall have a visitor soon. My neighbor, the mole, wears a black, beautiful velvet coat and his house is 20 times larger than mine. If he were your husband, you would well be provided for indeed. The mole was wealthy and knew many things, such as how to dig long tunnels for the earth and the best places to find juicy worms and insect grubs. But he did not enjoy sunshine or pretty flowers as Thumbelina did. 
When he arrived, Thumbelina was polite and respectful, although she did not feel at all interested in him as a husband. Sing for our dear neighbor, prodded the field mouse, and as Thumbelina sang, Lady Bird, Lady Bird, fly away home, and many other songs, the mole was enchanted by her sweet voice. The mole had dug a, a tunnel that led from the field mouse home to his own. He invited Thumbelina to walk there whenever she liked, but warned her not to be alarmed at the sight of a dead bird that lay in the passage. Then the mole took a burning piece of wood from the field mouse stove and offered to show them the way. He went before them through the winding tunnel. The wood glittered in the dark. As the mole had said, in the middle of the tunnel lay a beautiful swallow. He must have died from the cold, thought Thumbelina with a shiver. The mole brusquely pushed past the bird, saying, He will sing no more now. How miserable it must have been to be born a bird. I am thankful that none of my children will be birds, for they can do nothing but whistle and chirp, then die of hunger in the winter. Yes, you are wise, the field mouse agreed. What is the use of their song? Thumbelina said nothing, but when the, mo when the others had turned their backs, she bent down to stroke the soft feathers that covered the bird's head and kissed his eyelids closed. His closed eyelids. Perhaps you are one who sang to me so sweetly in the summer, she whispered. That night, Thumbelina could not stop thinking about the, sw the swallow. Unable to sleep, she got out of bed and gathered soft down gathered soft down dried flowers and strips of corn leaves, which she wove into a basket as warm as wool. Nervously, she carried the blanket through the long, dark passageway until she came to the spot where the, was the, where the swallow, swallow lay as still as stone. She gently tucked the blanket around the silent swallow. Goodbye, lovely bird, she whispered as she bent down to give the swallow a final hug farewell. When the Thumbelina laid her head on the swallow's breast, the her she heard a heart. Ugh. But when Thumbelina laid her head on the swallow's breast, she heard a faint sound. Thump. Thump. It was the swallow's heart, for he was not really dead, only numb from the cold. The warmth of Thumbelina's blanket had restored him. The rest of the winter, the swallow remained in the tunnel and grew stronger with Thumbelina's tender care. She was nothing... She said nothing about it to the mole or the field mouse, for she knew that they would not approve. Soon spring came and the sun thawed the frozen earth once more. One day the swallow said to Thumbelina, Because of your tender care, I shall soon regain my strength and be able to fly again, he said, very grateful for Thumbelina's kindness, and asked if she would go with him. Thumbelina thought of the green woods and meadows thick with spring flowers and the swallow would visit on his journey. But then she remembered how the field mouse had taken her in and she would, and she was when she was cold and hungry. I would love to go with you, but I cannot, she answered sadly. Farewell then, replied the swallow. I hope you find the happiness that you deserve. Then he flew out into the brilliant light of day. As Thumbelina watched him go, tears rose in her eyes. She had come very fond of the dear swallow and knew she would miss his company. One day, the field mouse announced, What good fortune! My neighbor has asked to marry you. We will make preparations for that special day when you will join the mole to live in his grand home. And so the wedding day was set. With the help of four expert weavers hired by the field mouse, Thumbelina spent the following weeks gathering flax to spin into the linen. They worked, to, worked day and night, adding bits of wools to keep Thumbelina warm in the mole's chilly home. Every evening, the mole visited and spoke with longing of time when summer would be over so, and they would be married. Thumbelina was not pleased at the thought of spending her life with the tiresome mole who loved the darkness of his deep hallways. She wished that the summer would never end. When Autumn arrived, Thumbelina's wedding clothes were ready. She sobbed pitifully and said she did not wish to marry the mole and live in the darkness beneath the earth. Nonsense, declared the mouse. Do not be stubborn or I shall bite you with my sharp teeth. He is very handsome mole and you are lucky that he wants you. The queen herself does not wear more beautiful velvets. 
His kitchen and cellars are quite full. You should be very, you should feel very grateful for this opportunity. Sadly, Thumbelina counted the days until the mole was to fetch her. Every morning as the sun rose and each evening when it set, Thumbelina slipped to the cornfield so she could watch the glimpse of the sky. As the wind parted, the tall leaves of corn. She often caught sight of flocks of birds soaring as high above they were but little specks in the brilliant autumn sky. Farewell, bright sun. Goodbye, sweet friends, she cried. Early one morning, Thumbelina walked a short di distance to where the corn had recently been cut, and only dry and stubble, stubble remained in the fields. Thumbelina wept as she stood among brilliant red flowers that grew near the field's mouse store. Suddenly, she heard a familiar sound. It was a swallow. As soon as, she sp as soon as he spied Thumbelina, he swooped down to greet her. Bitter tears filled her eyes as she told him that she was soon to marry the mole and live always beneath the ground, never again to see the brilliant sun or feel the warmth. Will you fly away with me now? asked the swallow. I'll take you far from here, over the mountains to country, where it's always summer. You saved my life when I lay frozen in the dark passage, and I can't bear to see you so unhappy. Please come with me, dear little Thumbelina. Thumbelina climbed onto the swallow's back and held on tightly as the bird rose high into the air. The swallow flew over forests and sea and above the tallest mountain's peaks, forever covered with snow. Thumbelina tucked herself under the swallow's feathers to keep warm in the frigid air but she kept her head uncovered as they soared so she could see the beautiful lands that passed beneath them. At last they reached a meadow filled with wildflowers. The sun shone brightly on trees heavy with lemons and oranges. Long vines of purple, green, and white grapes climbed daisy marble pillars, and the air was fragrant with honeysuckle and gardenias. They flew by an ancient palace high on the walls were many swallows nests. One of these was the home of Thumbelina's friend. You're welcome to stay with me, he said, but I don't think you would be happy living so high above the ground. The swallow landed in a small meadow near three broken pieces of marble pillar. Here you will be comfortable and have all you've wished for, said the swallow. Then he placed her on a sturdy leaf of a large white flower. How surprised Thumbelina was to see in the flower center a man scarcely larger than herself. He had a golden crown upon his head and delicate wings at his shoulders. When he saw Thumbelina, he was delighted. Her beauty and kindness glowed, more, glowed from within, and she looked so enchanting to him that he fell immediately in love with her. The prince placed his golden crown upon her head and asked if she would be his wife and queen of his fairy kingdom. Thumbelina's heart filled with joy. She knew that she, he would be a much and better husband than the horrible toad who would only say croak, 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 the disagreeable beetle or the gloomy mole. All the flowers opened and each revealed a little maiden like herself or a tiny lord. They brought presents to Thumbelina. The best gift of all was a pair of gossamer fairy wings which they fastened on her shoulders so she might fly from flower to flower. Her dear friend, the swallow, watched from above. Thumbelina asked him to sing a wedding song, and there was much rejoicing. When the time came for the swallow to return to his home to the north, he wished Thumbelina and her prince much happiness. During his long travels, the swallow swung the story. A storyteller in Denmark named Hans Christian Andersen heard his swallow's song. He wrote it exactly as it happened so that all the children would know of the adventures of a kind and lovely Thumbelina. the end so the next one is one you guys really wanted to hear about was the coco chanel
This is a story of a French girl named Gabriella. When she was little, Gabriella lived in an orphanage. The nuns thought Gabriella was very strange. She was different and they didn't like it. Gabriella was different. While the other girls played, she liked to sew with a needle and thread. When Gabriella grew up, she sewed by day and sang by night. The people watching called her Coco. When Coco finally went to bed, she dreamt in shapes and patterns. She wanted to make so many things. One day, Coco made a hat for her friend, simple and elegant. It was different to the usual style. Coco made more and more hats until she had enough to open a hat shop. Her modern designs surprised the mademoiselles in Paris. evening at a party, Coco saw that the other ladies weren't dancing. Their corsets were too tight and they could hardly breathe. So Coco created a brand new style, simple and straight. Her dresses and skirts would be comfortable to wear. At her first fashion show, some people sneered. Coco's clothes were too strained and different for them. But as time went on, Coco showed them that to be stylish, you don't need to wear corsets or sparkly sequins. And being different might make other people think differently too. That's why everyone now remembers the young Gabriella as the great designer Coco Chanel. So I'm gonna read this um, in case you guys just wanna hear a little bit more on her bio. So Coco Chanel was born 1883 and died in 1971. Coco Chanel was one of the most famous fashion designers that ever lived. She was born as Gabriella Chanel in a charity hospital and grew up in a run-down house in Frenchtown. Following the death of her mother, when Gabriella was 11 years old, she was sent to a strict convent school where she learned to sew. After school, she became a seamstress, sewing for a tailor during the day. While in the evening, she sang on stage. It was at this time that she learned the nickname Coco from the soldiers in the audience. In 1908, she became a hat maker and soon afterwards opened her first shop in Paris. Soon she had more shops and started to sew clothes as well as hats. Her simple, elegant designs, which were straighter and shorter than normal and freed women from corsets, took the world by storm. In 1918, Chanel opened a quarter house in 13... 31 Rue Cambon, and three years later, she unveiled her first perfume, Chanel No. 5. She became a worldwide fashion icon, and her comfortable, easy-to-wear styles changed women's clothes forever. And
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment below. And the previous video where I showed the books, I had showed these two books. Um, but sadly, I didn't really look into them. And they are more of like, um, not really a story of George Washington Tarver. It's more um, just like facts. Um, the same goes with this. So I can't really use this one as like a story time because like they're really long. Um, so I'm sorry if you looked forward to these books. I will go back and look um, and see if they have um, more story versions of these books for you guys. And um, yeah, again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will be reading the other books though and um, those videos will be up real soon and until then guys bye